Hey guys, I'm Chantal with Growing Up Without Borders. Welcome to our channel. I've got Tara here today who has lived in New Zealand for how many years now? Five years. Five years. And I thought it'd be really cool to do a video on the differences between the school systems here in New Zealand versus, let's say, America or other countries that we've lived in. Mm -hmm. And so, let's find out the major differences. Sounds here we good. go. Here we go. We are Growing Up Without Borders, a family of five traveling to every country in the world. It all began with a five-week trip to Europe back in 2013, which then led to us traveling to now six continents and 98 countries. We've been blessed to spend many months here in New Zealand and explored everything from the very top to the very bottom. Are you ready to join the journey? Let's go. So one of the things that kind of surprised me the most in the school system, and I was just told this last week, hmm. is that kids don't start school until their actual birthday. Their birthday of turning five, yes. Of turning five. Mm -hmm. But what that means, and this is what I didn't understand fully, is that they actually, let's say their birthday's in March, they actually only start school in March. So from a teacher's perspective, they have the whole kids set up. Certain right. kids are used to like sitting at the desk and kind of like the whole school system. Yep. And now a new child comes in. Yep. That's what they do, even if it's at the end of the year. But you can decide. So like if you your child turns five, you can wait if you want, but they can't really start before five. They can't start before but five. But you can wait. If I you think want. that's one of the, I don't know if other countries do that, but mm -hmm. I have never heard of this mm -hmm. in my life. And I thought that was so bizarre. So that's one big difference between big difference. the school yes. systems. Um, another difference is uh, there are years. So they call it like year one to. Right. So primary school would be year one through year six. Mm -hmm. Intermediate, which would be like middle school, mm -hmm. would be year seven and eight. And then high school, college is years nine through 13. Yeah, so you actually have like yeah, so you have five an extra years versus year. like in America, it's like junior, no, sophomore. Yeah, so freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. senior. So it's four years. So technically, so this is what's interesting about college and high school here in New Zealand is that you can be done after year 12. Oh, you but can. if you want to get university entrance or called UE, you have to go to year 13. So gotcha. year 13 is like level three. So what's cool about the schools the high schools here in New Zealand is that you essentially are starting. So the pathway to university is starts uh, essentially in year 11. You start mm -hmm. the NCA, so that's level one, two, and three. So then you go to university is level four and five, and then advanced to seven and eight. And so essentially you're starting your schooling, starting in year 11 of university. And so it's not the same like in the US uh, where you have to like get accepted into college or into a university. You just, if you've passed your 13 year automatically in, you get UE. That's amazing. The other thing that was quite surprising to me is that your first year of UE is actually paid for in New Zealand. Yes. Fees so, free, first year, first fees free. Year, yep. Fees free. Yep. Um, that's pretty unheard of. I know other countries in, in Europe, a lot of the schooling is completely free, university and such. Yeah, or but, cheap in general. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, in the US, in Canada, mm. that's just unheard of. So this is a pretty good incentive for the kids to start and uh, get their university yes. degrees. And it's, yeah, it is a great incentive. You do have to be like a resident or a citizen. It is right, right, available right, right. for yeah, internationals, yeah. obviously. But, yeah. uh, and so I work in the university sector and tertiary education here in New Zealand and in the US. And what's interesting about that is actually like it, that first year is really great and incentivize people to start. But what happens is so many people start and they don't continue. Mm. And it actually, I think would be more incentivizing to make it their last year. Oh, that's free. a good idea. So they like so are they motivated, you know, because oh, there's something yeah. about paying for something that motivates you to do something, right? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. so if you pay and then knowing that your last year will be free, mm. I think that that would make more sense. Yeah. But that's just my two cents. I'm not in charge of it. It's a good idea. So. That's a really good idea. Or even the mid mid year. Yeah, something, just, something it's just to make that them first year. Keep going. It's yeah, uh, like, yeah. Oh, sure, I'm going to do this. That's free, but they're not really into it. Or they might yeah. just be trying it out or whatever. Trying it out, and uh, you get a lot of people dropping. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, well, let's talk uh, back to primary school years. Right. What about homework? How does homework work here? So yeah, so homework was really different and that was really shocking when I first came here. Uh, so we, my kids always went to like a, a, a rather rigorous private school in the US. And just, just as a side note, it's hard to say, this is what school is like in the US because every state is different private, public, you know, what they offer. Yeah, so, but I would say like the norm. The norm. Like, I went to school in Canada growing up. Okay. My kids went to school in both Florida and Canada. Okay. And we had a lot of homework. And I spent a lot of my evenings sitting yeah, with them true. at a young age and just doing papers and papers and papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots so of here, you so can here, say generalized. Generalized. Yeah. yeah, they don't they don't have uh, it's not required at primary and intermediate. It's they 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 term it as optional. So that they don't feel that that family should be pressured to spend having their kids spending a lot of time doing homework, that it's family time, mm -hmm. that they have enough going on, they do, they work hard all day. This is just the philosophy here. That's and nice. that they shouldn't um, have to do all this homework. But a lot of internationals live here. And so they see that they value homework or maybe your child is already in the routine and you wanna keep it. So they give you that option to do the homework and they hand it to you on a Monday and they like, say, if you could work on these you know, five things, by Friday and so it's not like something that has to be handed in every day interesting uh, but yeah so and you're not really shunned upon if you're not doing it oh no, no not at all the thing is though being that it's optional is your kids really realize that it's optional so my kids were in really good habits of doing homework and then that was gone <laughs> But it's Pretty nice quickly. because then if you want an <laughs> evening as a family night and not feel like you have to just yep. get dinner and then dishes and then, okay, it's homework time and then it's bedtime, you know, it just gives you a little bit more of a relaxed No, it does atmosphere. give you, a, yeah. yeah. It is just depends on your like philosophy of education in yeah. general. Yeah. Like we want to create education as something that's fun and something that you do for your whole life. You're always learning and you're yeah. always growing. And so it's not so important that you just like, you know, you don't want to burn people out <laughs> by the time they get to university which I is agree. what happens a lot I think in the US mm. and then just standardized where they just tests do this like and... whole thing where they throw their books out the window when they're done it's just like I'm done I'm never gonna be read a book again I'm never gonna you know they're just like yes it's done a, right so yeah. you have to create it and that's what they do in New Zealand really well is they create an environment of education that people like mm. and they let you tailor what you're focusing on even at primary school on what you love like if you love science and you love it, they'll happy to have you do that and the, you know and so and so it 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 grows a, uh, a culture of loving education. And this is why you'll see many New Zealanders being some of the most, um, you know, creating some of the most unique things and to our world as a whole, because they are just, they're, they're, they're out of the box thinkers. Definitely. They're, they're used to being able to just kind of think and there's no limitations and there's no, they have to prove themselves on, you know, and it's this, this ladder format. It's now, not. would you think it's because also, for example, the school we visited, so I haven't visited many, mm -hmm. but just the ones that I have seen, they have like the, this recess kind of play area and then the school um, around and mm -hmm. it's like this feeling of an open concept where the kids are open to going outside and playing and um, it, it was kind of like this messy disorderly classroom you could say versus like all the desks lined up in order you know it was more so you get that creative thinking just with the whole environment I wonder. yes that's totally how it is especially yeah. at the primary age yeah. where they, they're just encouraged to be creative if it's nice out you're doing school outside mm -hmm. and it, there's no like like a set way of doing something students are at or encouraged to like speak up and to ask questions you know which can be very different whereas like normally a lot of cultures it's just only the teacher talks mm. and so there's a lot of kids talking I remember my kids being like this is really different <laughs> the really? kids are really talking a lot oh, wow. you know as opposed to you know it isn't just asking questions or answering questions or the teacher just is it they're more in control of what they're doing and so that can look a little bit chaotic but it's more of uh, just kind of growing and learning through action and activity and things that they're interested in as opposed to just like you know follow this textbook that's cool. so that's quite different what about so I know like we were talking about in in the US a lot of it depends on the school the kids go to of course right. and, and if you're paying or not paying right but in New Zealand so our kids didn't really have too many sports at their school so mm. they had like gym but it wasn't even really a full gym kind of curriculum if you will I don't feel anyway but mm. Uh, how are the sports and such? Yes. The so what's really great, one of the things I really like about New Zealand education is that when they're in primary school, they expose them to everything. So what's different about New Zealand is that it's a nationalized 
curriculum. So every school, no matter where you live in New Zealand, are getting the same curriculum. They don't all get through the same amount of the curriculum, but that's the goal for every school every year. So you could say, doesn't really matter overall, like the big picture, you know that the schools are gonna be pretty much the yeah, same. Yeah, so if you move to different places, it, it would be the same thing. Whereas it's similar in the US where you know what you learn in third grade, you know what you learn in fourth grade, for example. But um, yeah, so they, they teach music, they teach art, they teach swimming, mm -hmm. they teach every type of sport, but New Zealand sports, you're gonna see more rugby, cricket, that sort of thing, you know, but exposure to it. And they don't give people choices. You have to be in the play, you have to participate oh. in the choir. Oh. You don't have a choice. Oh, okay. Which I, and they, and they oh, always value um, public speaking, is always taught really young, which I really like as a public speaking teacher. And so uh, I just really think that, what's really great is so many kids will say, no, I don't wanna do that. But they never actually really tried. They mm. don't really know mm. that they don't, they're not gonna like it. And so this forces them to try swimming, to try all these sports, to try all these things that they never would have. And they, they do, really unique things like gardening is a big thing. Uh, they teach them how to like kayak and like water wow. sports and like a lot of really kind of cool wow. things that I would have never learned. Another one is <laughs> like um, yeah. a lot of them are, I was gonna say, speaking of uniforms too, so a lot of them are mm. wearing uniforms. You see a lot of people going to school bare feet, which is like barefoot, which is kind of hilarious. But hilarious, yeah. a lot of the schools do have uniforms and you don't always see that unless you're sending them to a private school but this is like public schools that yes. have uniforms as public well. schools and private schools so mo I would say the majority of schools in New Zealand have uniforms the majority of the schools in the US do not have uniforms yeah yeah so there's a little bit of both but of course uniforms are a big thing here in New Zealand and they they very they they teach it in the sense that your uniforms representing our school you are representing our school so when uh -huh. they travel for sports they have to wear their full uniform and then when they get there they change into their sport outfit like they're just very much you're representing us they're teaching you know how you're being portrayed is communicating a message mm -hmm. and so that's very interesting and very different and are a lot of the schools like boys and then girls because mm. that's rare in Canada and in the U.S. to have a boys school and a girls school, but here I see that uh, often. Yes, often. And the yeah. high school, college age is all boys and all girls school. All my kids go to all, girl, all boys or all girls school. But then there's also mixed ones too. So generally within a community, um, if you're in a more populated area, you'll have all the choices. Okay. Yeah. I wonder, it'd be curious to see like the benefits, the advantages and disadvantages of both. Yes, and that's a great question. Like, I'm just going to touch on that yeah, a little bit yeah, because yeah. all of my kids have gone through this or are currently in it. Mm -hmm. Is my, me coming in as someone who's never sent their kids to all boys or all girls school was just very interesting and I was very excited about it. And I just thought, how cool would it be for them to not have the pressure of that opposite sex, you know, for different reasons, yeah. depending on who you're talking about. But this are some little things that I found out to be interesting and have kind of shifted my thinking about it actually the Let's girls are uh, like the, the girls are great because like I mean while they still have clicks you know it's different uh -huh. when you take boys out of the picture it solves a lot of the problems no competing. the drama There's... isn't the same oh, yes yeah, yeah. and they're all wearing the same clothes they're all in a uniform they all have to have their hair no back just they... to have their hair done yes they don't day. have any makeup they don't you know and so what's very interesting is i've taught like i've helped coach like female sports and and they just they like have no sense because they're not around boys so they just belch out loud and they'll scratch their <laughs> <laughs> or though, do you know what I mean? And they're just really comfortable with themselves. Yeah. And so that's just like kind of <laughs> really hilarious. cool to see because they're just, there's no pressure. Okay. And then also there is uh, something that I've kind of, <laughs> when all, when there's a, an all boys school and boys are all together all the time, it does not smell good. Oh. <laughs> they have imagine. their clothes, their hair, oh. their shaving. Because already that's the way guys are. This already, but when know? they're not motivated because girls, girls are going to be at school, mm. let me tell you, it's a little bit shocking when I walk on these campuses and they're just like, you know, because they're always telling the boys, like, make sure your uniform's clean and, you know, and tuck in and because you have to because they have no motivation oh because there's gosh. no females there. That's hilarious. It's so funny. So, and I also find that at boys' schools that I'm like, I think that they're not learning to communicate well. Mm. because they don't have because the women really teach you communication mm -hmm. and I just found that I just noticed because women, women talk a lot more if you they didn't talk know, a lot more women more, say yeah. more words than yes do. and so like a lot of them will be friends with girls and they'll learn a lot of their communication skills 
from girls. And so when they're just not around them, and it's just, I just, I can't believe how much like grunting and like, you know, it's like they don't even know how to respond. They don't like know how to make eye kind of like, how are you not learning this? Oh, wow. <laughs> and then, so, okay, like, overall okay. then, what's, is it more advantageous or disadvantageous mm, to mm. have, what would you say, or is it kind of like you're mixed? Mm. No, I wouldn't say that it's more or less. I think there's great things. There's like this brotherhood at the boys' school, and there's just like, it's like it can be very uplifting, and it can be, but it can also be bad. You know, it's like I don't think that I there's guess a perfect need scenario, a but I think it takes a lot of drama out. Yeah, overall. I think so. Overall, it takes yeah. a lot of the drama out of high school. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think what you would have to have is if you do have that scenario, then you have to have them involved in other uh, activities together. where there's yeah. So together. they'll have like dances and discos together or whatever and oh, they cool. do different things oh, where the schools fun. mix but then mm -hmm. it's so funny because they just don't know what they're doing. It's interesting. <laughs> okay, let's, okay, they'll let's learn it eventually. Let's talk a little bit about um, the ability because I know in the U.S. and certainly in primary school mm. we couldn't just like our kids weren't allowed to just leave. Of course where we sent them to school you can't anyway you have to drive there but can kids like here yes. they can just walk on their own home yes. a lot of them are on scooters so there's like a bit of a freedom that freedom. the kids yes. have so when i moved back the second time i moved where i knew i knew about this and i knew that i needed to rent a house where um all because my kids go to like three or four different schools and yeah. and so they could where they could all walk or scooter or bike to it mm. and so then they just they leave the house and then they come home when they're done and it's fan Fantastic. Wow. It's unbelievable freedom for a mother. And she has like a younger one too. So it's yeah. not like they're like all teenagers, you know. Oh yeah, no, he was, uh, yeah, like uh, six when I came here. Yeah. And yeah, so I would uh, scooter him to school, but like we were in a place where he was never really on a road. So he just kind of goes through the field and I could watch him and then he just scooters down. And there's so many kids walking and he meets yeah. up with his friend. So many parents walking around. So yeah, it's yeah, totally yeah. fine. At, yeah, at that time, you do see a lot of the younger kids just walking on. Yeah, and they have like the crossing guards yeah. for when they actually cross the street. So you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, it's amazing that they can just walk and bike anywhere. That's nice. Um, I was going to say one thing that was quite different and I was a bit shocked and maybe that's because there's no um, health care like standardized kind of health care in the U.S. Mm. But before we brought our kids, we had to have, I forget the paper, if it was like blue or green or something. It was like, do you have your whatever, your yellow paper? And that was a medical. So they had to have a medical to, medicals, yeah. to be able to get into the school. Yeah, get into the school to be able to do any sports mm. in the fall. You had to be approved by a doctor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they don't have that here. I've no. never done that. And I wonder if it's just because they have, you know, health care that's provided for their citizens, if that might be a reason why. Yeah, maybe. Like, you don't have to worry about the injuries. You don't have to worry yeah. about liability. I don't know. That's it's different because, like, I enrolled different. our kids in different schools in different countries, and, yeah, the, the U.S. was the only one that required, required that. the medical. So that's okay. different. Um, all right. Another thing that was different for us was, for example, the school that we sent them to, because it was in Florida, their hallways were outside, so it wasn't an actual building that they were inside, but all the doors locked mm, as soon as classes locked. started. Yeah. They did drills for if a guy comes in with a gun, like there was these drills, like they would do a fire drill in other countries. They had drills for like, I don't know what you Yeah, the active that. shooter training. All of my yeah. kids in the U.S. went through active shooter and training. And did they do that here? <laughs> no, no. Because guys, people don't have guns here. People like don't it's have just, guns here. Even the police not... officers don't have guns here. Yeah, it's different. It's Holy. Great. It's so a whole like, different world. Yeah, you don't have that fear of like, because in the U.S., I don't know what the stats are. What is, they're high. The, they're high. Like what you guys see in on international media, uh, in terms of how many school shootings there are in the U.S., there is a lot more than that. There's a lot more that are stopped before they start. You know, there's a lot more that. Yeah, it's just even in like the city I'm from, Milwaukee, and there has been a lot of school shootings, and you would have never heard that. It's crazy. Because if there's somebody no, dies, maybe it's not in the news. Mm -hmm. And there's no bulletproof glasses, like glass. Right, like you have to go through medical metal detectors when you walk into high schools yeah. in Milwaukee. You have to go through and there's security. Oh yeah, you have to go yeah. through a lot Jeez. of security. Yeah, it's not like that It's at a all. different world. Like the parents can actually go on school property here. Yes. Um, you do have to register. Yeah, it, yeah, you check but, in, but or not, depending but on But it's not it like you're small. fenced in with like no. this big fence and it's like, you know, guarded and... No. You guys, I mean, this is like a reason enough to move out of the U.S., to be honest. <laughs> oh, it's so hard, though. With, like, you know, to be honest, like, you can't even send your kids to school without worrying about them being shot. It's okay, terrible. it's actually true, mm -hmm. and it's a problem, yeah. and it shouldn't happen. Mm. 
it's just really sad. We should talk a bit about the future of schooling then, because, for example, if you're in the U.S., like your options, a lot of people do homeschool. I think there's yeah, a yeah, lot more homeschoolers in the U.S. per capita than any other country in the world. Agreed. Probably because of these problems and things. Um, yeah, but true. I think with COVID mm -hmm. and with with online being so available to the world, there's going to be so many more options for online schooling. And you were telling me about one earlier that was really fascinating. So do you know a little bit about, cause you were yes. saying like, yeah, explain it. Yeah. So I, I agree with you completely. Like I think that schools, universities, they haven't adjusted to the fact that there's google.com. Okay. Yeah. You can get, we are in the information age. You can get all the information and it's free and mm. you don't need to pay for it. Mm. And it doesn't need to be packaged at like a university or a high school. Okay. And so like the, the goal of education is changing and the resources. And now we have the internet and now we can open up the world. So there is like, there's like this Crimson Academy, which is like this guy who, and I don't know that much about it, but like online high school where you're going to school with kids live in, you know, you're in your chair, you're in live, and you have teachers from around the world, you have students from around the world, global so learning, cool. access to education and, and higher education, and, and, and you know, no matter where you live in the world, even if you're in like a small farming town, the future of education is gonna look really different. I think that mm -hmm. it's gonna be lifelong. I think it's not something that you just do in your 20s. I think 100%. that the options for like high schoolers is gonna be different. I think that, I think we need to go into more of a project-based education system where like you, instead of just learning how to do something and you don't know how this actually works in the real world or how this actually would ever matter to you, but do it in a project base. There's a lot on the, on, uh, in California, the, a lot of high schoolers that are moving towards this and that's mm. really cool. When you mean project-based, do you mean like apprenticeship type or how no, do you No, no, no. I mean like you go to say your sophomore year in high school mm -hmm. and you do one project. And, you, and, that, and that's your math, your science, your writing, your presentation skills, and you present it all at the end and you create something. And it can be around art, it can be around engineering, it can be around... Oh, so you're kind of encompassing yes. all the subjects within one project? Yes, all the subjects within one project. So you're not just like learning algebra, you're learning how the algebra would be actually working within how it helps you mm -hmm. build your project. And so it has to have like certain, like, uh, you know, it has to hit certain criteria obviously so that you make sure that your, your project incorporates all these things, but it's, uh, you can do it whenever you want. The timing mm -hmm. is different. You don't have to be at school from eight to five, wow. which is like, totally or eight different. to three or whatever. But that's the same as like the work environment is gonna be totally changing. Oh, yeah. You know, like it just doesn't make sense. We don't have to go and sit at a desk no. between eight and five every day. No. It's not efficient. It's not effective. It's not the best way to work. Mm -hmm. And a flexible work environment makes sense. It'll be interesting to see in certain Asian countries how that's going to be because they are very ingrained and like almost robotic in the way they, they right. sit there and do their work and where they think that's the best way to do yeah, it yeah 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 oh the world's changing school's changing it's exciting but here's the differences that's i hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about what school's like here in new zealand yep. uh, make sure you subscribe hit yes. the notification bell so you're notified of our next videos and we'll see tara on our channel maybe uh, in another yep. month Kiwi or so americans check yes. it out yep. check out our channel yep and we'll see you next week bye see you